OpenAI are not mocking about when it comes to ChatGPT, and they have just announced some awesome updates which really take ChatGPT to the competition. What am I talking about? ChatGPT can now hear, see, and speak. They've gone fully multimodal, and we're going to check it out. So on their blog here, they said that ChatGPT can now see, hear, and speak. And not only that, they've reintroduced search. So now the data that ChatGPT can access for you is not limited to September 2022. And I'll take you through some examples of that. But the big news from last week is this basically multimodal functionality, which is rolling out to the mobile versions. So we're beginning to roll out new voice and image capabilities in ChatGPT. They offer a more intuitive type of interface by allowing you to have a voice conversation or show ChatGPT what you're talking about. And I'll tell you what, the examples that they've shown are pretty impressive, but equally, and I'll show you a little bit later, some examples that people have gone and done and tested really show you how powerful this can be. So first of all, uh, talking here, I've got it loaded up here. You can now speak with ChatGPT and have it talk back. We want to hear a bedtime story. Tell us a story about the super duper sunflower hedgehog named Larry. Start with telling us a little bit about him. Larry was a unique hedgehog unlike any other. He had bright sunflower petals instead of spines. Residing in Meadowville, Larry spread joy and color wherever he rolled. People cherished his radiant presence. What was his house like? Larry's house was a cozy burrow beneath a sunflower field. It so basically you get there, as it says here, you can use your voice to engage in a back and forth conversation with your assistant. This is sort of, you know what we've sort of dreamed of in a kind of Iron Man type scenario where you talk to your AI assistant, hopefully it doesn't become vision. But imagine that in your kind of Google Home or your Alexa or something like that, which is going to be the next step. I mean, you know, Google have to start rolling this out to their Google assistants and stuff like that. Otherwise, they're going to be left behind. Now, I'll show you on my phone. Unfortunately, it only works with Android and iOS at the moment. It would be nice if it was available on the PC version. But if we have a look here, what you need to do, I'll, I'll demonstrate more closely, is go up to your settings and then uh, click on beta features and then you'll have voice conversation there. And then when you're ready to have a conversation, there's some little headphones in the corner. Click on that. Write me a poem about a banana. Banana, ripe and mellow. Its skin was yellow, soft and sleek, hiding a sweetness many seek. It hung with its peers, a bunch so tight, waiting for hands to grasp and bite. Smoothies or pies or eat plain, its flavor always did entertain. A burst of energy, snack so neat, a banana's touch is always sweet. So next time you peel one back to dine, remember the magic and his fine line. Would you like to chat about something else related to bananas or maybe another topic? Can you turn that into a limerick? Of course. There's a limerick inspired by the poem. There once was a banana so fine, the sun's golden glow would shine. Eaten plain or in pie. Underneath the blue sky, its sweetness was simply divine. How does that sound? Any that sounds great. And you also get the transcript of that conversation there. So there we go. Really, really cool. As I said, unfortunately not available on PC, but available on your iOS app and the Android app to ChatGPT Pro members. So if you subscribe to ChatGPT, then you can get access to those beta features. And it comes with different voices, so you can pick different voices. So this is uh, Juniper. In a tranquil woodland, there was a fluffy mama cat, Mila. One sunny day, she cuddled with her playful kitten, Milo. That's Juniper. Sky. Shade of an old oak tree. 
Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle. You're going to have a new playmate soon. I mean, it has real, that natural language sound that we've sort of become used to with Eleven Labs. I mean, I've heard people say it's not quite there with like a, with Eleven Labs, but I would disagree. I think it's as good as, if not better, especially this Juniper character. Those ears perked up, curious. A new playmate? Lila purred. Yeah. Now, I've gone and chosen, I think it's Cove. It's a baby sister. Milo's eyes widened with excitement. A sister? Will she chase tails like I do? Lila chuckled. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you? Emba? Sure, won't you? Milo nodded eagerly, already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. Breeze. Old oak tree. Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle. You're going to have a new playmate soon. Milo's ears perked up, curious. So there you go. You can pick the different voices, and I'm sure they're going to add new voices. But it's very quick, as you saw from that demonstration that I did on my phone. And it allows you to basically, as they say, to have a back and forth conversation with chat GPT, which is really, really impressive. I've done a review of Hey Pi, which was built specifically for that kind of conversational type experience. And I did see somebody saying that they had a really good conversation with ChatGPT. And I would still recommend Hey Pi if you're looking for a more kind of human sounding kind of and human feeling interaction, even though it's not human. But Hey Pi is designed specifically for that kind of human conversation and slightly warmer from, from that point of view. But as I say, the voices that they've used and they've picked using Whisper, uh, which is their technology, is really, really impressive. It's full of expression and it feels like you're having a conversation. As I said, imagine if that is in your Google Assistant or your, you know, Alexa or something like that, which is, we know Amazon is working on something similar for Alexa and have heavily invested in Anthropic AI, the makers behind Claude. So you can see that coming. And then it's going to be how I dreamed it would be when I first got Google Assistant, when you kind of walk into the house and then you have a conversation with your computer or AI system. Anyway, so that is the voice. It hears and responds. And you'll notice it's really quick. So of course there's a delay and you've been able to kind of speak your instructions and then it kind of decodes it into text and then writes out the text. But now, given the speed, it does feel like a bit of a conversation. So definitely experiment and see how far you can get. The other big thing that OpenAI talked about here is chat about images. And this is impressive. So in this example, you can now show ChatGPT one or more images. Troubleshoot while your grill won't start. Explore the contents of your fridge to plan a meal or analyze a complex graph for work-related data. To focus on a specific part of the image, you can use the drawing tool in our mobile app. Again, it's on the mobile app. And so we'll look at this example. For this person, they're wanting help with their bike. Telling them how to lower the seat. But the seat doesn't have a, a lever. Look, there's no lever. Look, see? And he circled the problem. Ah. And he says, is this the lever? ChatGPT replies, nope, that's a bolt. You'll need an Allen wrench. Well, imagine if you didn't know what an Allen wrench was. Do I need a specific size? Here's, here's a picture of my toolkit. Here's my manual to the manual to the bike and my toolbox. Do I have the right tool? And look at this is the this is the wows a bit. Yeah, you do. It's in the left hand section of your toolbox. There's a set labeled Dewalt. Within that set, find the four millimeter Allen hex key. So just by showing it pictures, it was able to ascertain. Oh, you don't have a lever. You need an Allen key. You need an Allen key of this size. And oh yeah, just from that picture of your toolbox, the Allen key is in the bottom left. I mean, that is amazing. Now, this is OpenAI's example, obviously demonstrating the power of it. So you think, yeah, what's it like in real life scenarios? Well, people have already started using it. So this is courtesy of at Boris um, on Twitter to, to shout out to, to them. So this is a, a screenshot of a, a sash 
So I dashboard. All the files, I pasted all the code in, right? All this code here. And out came this. This was a first pass. It gave it the code. Which was. Uh, and it spat out the remarkable here. sales report. Out just a little bit. So okay. Can... And then this example. Um, again, it says what's happening in this diagram. And then it, it, it says, oh, this is an Airtable diagram. And this is what's happening. The user has shown ChatGPT this picture. And then it's broken down what's happening in the process flow of this diagram. Okay. Now, that's great for developers and engineers and all those kind of stuff. But say you're not one of those. What about more practical? Well, how about this? School help me understand. This one. Check this out. Eating this diagram of a human. Right. It's a picture of a human cell. Okay, and then it says, I'm a ninth grade biology student and I'm really struggling in school. Can you help me to understand this? So it's up, imagine uploading the homework and then saying, can you just explain this to me like I'm a ninth grader? And then it breaks it all down here. The and it says, I'm totally lost. Ability of this model Make it easier for me to understand. Provide accurate explanations of what not only do we have this whole thing, help me understand. And then it breaks it down even uh, more. Let's simplify things. Whole, like, then it uses analogies to help him understand that homework. Or you could take a photograph of a maths problem and say, can you break this down but show me your workings and things like that. All from a picture. This is really powerful stuff. Then there's this. This is really cool. I've seen crazy parking signs and you just think, whoa. Okay, what if it's a bank holiday and it's after five o'clock? Oh, oh, too much information, right? He's putting here. It's Wednesday at 4 p.m. Can I park at this spot right now? Tell me in one line. Don't muck about. It's taking a photograph of these complex parking signs with all the different parking times. And ChatGPT goes, yeah, you can park for up to one hour staying at 4 p.m. I mean, those are real life practical uses of this functionality. And this is rolling out over the next two weeks, again, to ChatGPT Plus users, people who subscribe and stuff. I don't have it yet, or I don't see it on my phone, on my mobile app version here. I don't quite see it yet. But as soon as I've, I've got it, I'll be testing it out and stuff like that. So really, really impressive stuff. But looking a bit more de into details behind all this. So they have new voice technology capable of crafting realistic and synthetic voices from just a few seconds of real speech. It opens doors to many creative and accessibility focused applications. However, there are risks behind this and they're putting stuff in to prevent that. Vision based, so on the image side of things, vision based models also present new challenges. So again, they're testing this, allowing to um, again put protections in place making vision both useful and safe and transparency about model limitations. Users might depend on ChatGPT for specialized topics, for example, in fields like research. We are transparent about the model's limitations and discourage higher risk uses, use cases without proper verification, etc. And as I said here, Plus and Enterprise users will get to experience voice and images in the next two weeks. We're excited to roll out these capabilities to other group users, including developers, soon after so really really impressive stuff really taking it to the competition and you know there was a meta announcement and they've really gone big on the ai kind of front making it accessible to everybody with glasses and stuff like that it just it keeps it's, it's so exciting and it never ceases to amaze me how fast things are moving in the ai world and just to add, ChatGPT can now use the web again. It briefly did that and then it stopped it. But if you browse with Bing here, um, I can then ask it more up-to-date questions. So, for instance, I could say, what was the Liverpool FC squad lineup last weekend? Now, obviously, back in the day when it was, it was only relying on data up to September 2022, wouldn't be able to tell me. Now you can see it's browsing, start up the web. So you can ask it questions about up-to-date contemporary issues because it now crawls the web. Yeah, here is the lineup uh, last weekend. Although, strictly speaking, this wasn't la last weekend. This was last night. So that's not really a weekend. Got that wrong. But it's quite right. It was Kelleher, Jones, Kwansar, Kanate, Simicas, Endo, Elliot, Gravenberch, Doak, Jota and Gapco. That just shows you how up to date it was. It's actually referring to the squad from last night in the Carabao Cup. 
So there you go. As I said, ChatGPT not mocking about. As soon as I have the picture version, being able to read pictures and solve problems on my phone, uh, I'll be testing that out and I'll be letting you know. Let me know what you think in the chat down below. This is exciting times and the speed of development and progression is really, really exciting. But let me know what you think in the comments down below and all of that. And as ever, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the likes because I like it. YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you're new to my channel, I do loads of stuff about AI, mid journey and all that kind of thing. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell. And that way you'll know when I go live with content just like this. Talking of content just like this, why don't you check out the videos right here? These ones over here on the screen right now. Check them out. I think you'll enjoy them. Thanks.